Hi, I'm Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Today we're gonna to check out Woodpecker's latest one-time tool. It's the MT Centering Gauge and Doweling Jig. Now this jig was originally released in January 2016. They're doing a rerun on it, so if you missed that first production run, here is a second opportunity for you. Now this is a dual purpose jig or uh, accessory or kit. Now what I have here is the master kit, which includes the inch model and also the metric. Uh, so first, let's talk a little about the centering gauge. The centering gauge um, allows you to insert these different bars that are available um, either in uh, Imperial or metric. Imperial comes with four, metric comes with five different widths. And either of the bars, no matter which one you have put in, has a center line hole in it. So you can insert a mechanical pencil and due to the mechanical nature of this jig, you simply squeeze the two sides together. It activates kind of a parallelogram mechanism and it instantly finds the center of your material, no matter the thickness. So not only do these bars allow you a quick opportunity to mark a center line on your material, but it also allows you to quickly and accurately lay out a mortise pocket or a tendon on the end of your material. By simply grabbing a uh, scribing utensil or a mechanical pencil and running it along the side of the bars. I did a couple test runs here on this side of a piece of poplar and if I wanted a 3 8 inch wide mortise in this 3 quarter inch thick stock, instantly I put in the 3 8 inch wide bar, uh, scribe the two ends, grab a square, mark out the ends, and now I have a perfect 3 8 inch wide and however long mortise I want in my material. Again, go ahead and replace those bars to whatever thickness you want half inch, seven sixteenths, three eighths, and one quarter inch on Imperial, and 10 millimeters, eight millimeters, six millimeters, five millimeters, and four millimeters when you're working in the metric system. If we switch gears over to the doweling jig, you simply unscrew the bars with the two knurled knobs on the ends and you screw on the doweling jig uh, bar. And that allows you to see these three threaded uh, holes and that takes the guide bushings. Now the guide bushings come in two different sizes here, three eighths of an inch and quarter inch. And it also comes with matching uh, alignment pins. So you, very simple, you just take the bushings, you screw them into those threaded holes. Then you either use this jig with the included stop on the end of the uh, doweling jig bar or you can remove it and just rely on alignment marks if you prefer to do things that way. Now Woodpeckers claims that you can do this by hand and you certainly can. I have done a few test ones. I wasn't 100% accurate with all the test joints that I did, but I found that uh, just grabbing a quick little uh, Irwin quick grip clamp here or whatever quick grip, quick grip clamp you have in your shop, excuse me, you can quick and easily just clamp the jig down and then there is absolutely no worry about the jig actually moving on you when you're drilling it. So for the test joint I did for this video, I took one and a half inch wide, three quarter inch thick poplar face frame stock and wanted to join them like a rail and style on a face frame. I put the three eighths inch guide bushings into the unit and then a three eighths inch uh, drill bit in my drill and relied on the stop that uh, you can simply tighten and dial in where you'd like it. There was no rhyme or reason to where I put the actual dowels. I just wanted it somewhat close to the center of the three quarter in, or one and a half inch wide stock. And being this nature of the parallelogram uh, mechanism, the dowels are gonna be perfectly centered on the three quarter inch uh, you know, thickness dimension. So that wasn't a concern. Once I had the stop set, grabbed my quick clamp, clamped the jig in place, and was able to uh, quickly drill two perfectly aligned holes in my piece of material or in the end of it. Then I moved over to the face side of the style. And again, I lined up the stop block with now the end of the material instead of the side of the material on the rail portion of it, clamped it in place and used the same two holes that I used earlier and aligned them perfectly. Now I didn't put a stop collar on my drill bit um, to control the depth. I just basically over drilled and then cut the dowels a little bit shorter. Um, so you can see that some of the dowels are, you know, shorter than the others, but basically put them together and they are perfectly aligned. I was very, very pleased with the results. Now, for some reason, I have a little bit of a skew. Uh, my Menards bot dowel is not very good. I simply should be using the woodpecker doweling maker, but for the time constraints of this video, 
um, had to use the store-bought stuff, but you simply put a uh, clamping pressure on these joints and it is gonna be nice and tight and crisp and certainly square as long as your material is milled nice and square. So in the test joint that I did, I only did two dowels. If you have a larger board um, that maybe needs four, five, six, seven, a million dowels, whatever it is, you simply use the registering pins and then move it along um, as you go one by one. So you move it in that, that third spot and then you drill two. Move it in the third spot, drill two, um, just like you see in the video here. Now in my shop, we don't use doweling jigs a whole lot just because one, we haven't really found a super quality one in the past, but also we have just better methods uh, for what we do here in our shop with a Festool Domino or a Craig Foreman for pocket screws for face frame work. Uh, but we're also a production shop. We're doing a lot of cabinet work, closet work. Um, we need to bust out things very, very fast. Uh, with that being said though, those alternative tools come at a very steep price. And that steep price comes at, you know, brings you a convenience factor to what those tools offer. When you compare those to this tool that offers a little bit of a variable and applications with the center engage and things like that. This becomes a very attractive tool for someone that uh, cannot afford a Festool Domino and wants some very accurate and consistent joinery. I was very happy with the results of my test joinery going into this video and studying this product. Um, the faces of the joinery are perfect. There's no difference whether I use a Domino or uh, if I'm, you know, at my assembly table assembling face frames with Craig screws uh, or, or pocket screws. So uh, as far as results are, it's, it's really a, a perfect match um, at a much more affordable cost. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the latest Woodpeckers one-time tool. Again, it's a Woodpeckers product. It comes in a very, very high quality build uh, with the anodizing, the laser engraving, the milling, just the quality is outstanding. And that's something that you come to expect from Woodpeckers products. Yes, they are expensive, but the quality is something you are gonna pass down for generations. Let me know below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'd love to provide some feedback and answer any questions you may have. Follow me on social media as I do product updates like this, as well as project updates. I'm Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.